Do you want to get ahead of 99% of job seekers? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to tell you how. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff. And today I want to tell you how to get ahead of 99% of job seekers. We're going to spill some truth bombs here. It might be a little hard hitting, so buckle up. This one's going to be good. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in learning how to act like the CEO of your career, consider signing up for my free weekly newsletter. And in the newsletter, I'm going to share with you actionable tips that you can start to implement immediately in order to start taking control back in your career. So I'll leave a link below for you to sign up. And remember, it's absolutely free. By the way, if you're ever looking for any promotional codes, that would be the place to get it. So make sure you sign up today. Let's face it, looking for a job is not easy. And I'm the first to admit it, especially having been so close to it for most of my career and been on both sides of the table, the job seeker and on the recruitment side. So I can speak with a high degree of authority here that navigating through an employment process can seem like a gauntlet. And honestly, in a lot of cases it is. And the job market's pretty challenging. When you're going in and you're applying for jobs and you're seeing six, seven, 800 people that have applied before you and the job's only been posted for 24 hours, it can be pretty disheartening. And I see a lot of these comments spilling over into my channel go through, pick any one of my job search videos and scroll through it and you'll see exactly how people feel. And the way I look at it is this, you have two choices. You can either complain or you can learn how to play the employment game because there is indeed a game that's being played here. And it's not one that's as sinister as you might think. It is a subtle game that is played. And honestly, this game is found throughout your life. It's not just in careers, it's in relationships, it's in financial sector, it's in just getting ahead in the game of life. You you have to learn to play the game. And if you don't, you're always going to be the victim of circumstance. You're always going to be blaming somebody else for your woes. And all it leads you to is a lack of accountability. I prefer to act like the CEO of my own career, of my own life, of my own relationships, of my own circumstances, and take ownership of it. And the best way to do that is to learn the rules of the game and use them to your advantage. And that's what differentiates the 1% from the rest. They have mastered the rules of the game and use them to their advantage. Because the simple fact is that a vast majority of people do average stuff and get average results in return. So the first thing that you should be doing is stop doing average shit. Stop putting together average resumes. Stop presenting yourself as average in interviews. Stop building average careers with average skill sets that are the same as everybody else. Learn to differentiate yourself. Get the skill in your career that is truly gonna be in demand and different from everybody else. And at the very minimum, harder to acquire and be willing to go above and beyond to get that skill to make yourself the most marketable you can be. Because when you do average things, you're only gonna produce average results. So if you wanna start being exceptional, start being exceptional. And it's as simple as that. Now, it doesn't mean that this is easy to accomplish because if it were easy, everybody would be doing it and that would be the new average. It does take effort. It does take work. It does mean that you have to take initiative and do things that are outside of your comfort zone. And that's why most people don't do it and you can use that to your advantage. Next, you need to stop making excuses. Not every company's out to get you. Not every hiring manager is incompetent. Not every recruiter sucks. Not every job stinks. Not every interview process is impossible. The fact of the matter is, is that if you're somebody that does make these excuses, it's likely that you're somebody that is not looking in the mirror and determining where at fault you are, what part you own in this equation. Now, sure, there is some luck associated with it. There is some timing of the market. There are certain markets that are better than others and worse than others. There are certain job types that are better than others or worse than others. But if you're being consistently told no, and you're being consistently rejected, and you're being consistently frustrated by your lack of success in your job search, it's likely that you're not taking a long, hard look in the mirror at where you truly can improve. Is your resume good? Do you have desirable skills? Have you screwed up in your career and you haven't made yourself very marketable? Because in a tight labor market, when there is a lot of competition, you have to assume that there are a lot of stronger candidates out there than you. What are you doing to set yourself apart from the crowd? And if all you're doing is being rejected and then just blaming it on everybody else, then you're lacking the ownership you need to act like a CEO of your career. And that brings us full circle to, you have to start doing the work. Most people know that they should be customizing resumes. Most people know that they should be preparing adequately for interviews. Most people know that they should be building their networks actively, yet they don't seek out the right kinds of learning opportunities in order to do that. They don't go through the effort. And if you're not putting the work in and you're not getting the results, you have to look in the mirror and say, am I truly doing what I need to do? Because the one percenters are doing these things. And those are the people who are landing the jobs at the highest pay rates 
and they're taking that offer from you. Next, you need to work smarter. And I saw a LinkedIn post recently that somebody mentioned that they had applied for over a thousand jobs and only had gotten two or three interviews and hadn't gotten an offer and they were completely defeated and broken. Now, the empathetic side of me really feels for that person who is having such little luck in their career, yet when you can so obviously see what they're doing wrong, yet they don't wanna consider it, they don't wanna get the help that they need, and they're not working smarter. Me personally, I'd never apply to a thousand jobs with a generic resume that's not generating any responses. Instead of applying for jobs with a generic and an ineffective resume, I would rather take all that time that I'm wasting applying for all these jobs and learn how to write a resume that's actually gonna get results. From there, I might only apply to one-tenth of them, but I'll be focusing on a lot more targeted jobs that are likely gonna be with much higher quality employers at higher pay rates. So it's all about working smart. Same thing goes with networking. I'm leveraging very targeted networks that can actually help me land jobs because the 99% knows that they should be doing networking, has no idea how to do it. So they spray and pray and hope that something's gonna stick. And then they end up with these networks that are completely ineffective because they didn't know how to build them the right way. Each day that goes by, their bills are stacking up, they're getting further and further behind, and there's more competition that's entering into the market. If they steadfastly refuse to get the help that they need, where the one percenters will. So the point here is to work smarter than you currently are. The next way to get ahead of 99% of the job seekers out there and really differentiate yourself is to stop always looking for these shortcuts. Listen, there's no special shortcut that's gonna get you from A to Z by sprinkling a little bit of magic dust. While things like ChatGPT are a great resource if you know how to use them properly, they're not perfect. And if you're applying for your dream job and you're writing a resume that's based off of AI, gosh, I really hope you don't care too much about the result there because the likelihood of it actually passing through and getting you to an offer process is gonna be very slim. The same thing goes for networking. There's no way to automate the hard work of building a solid network and an extension of that, building your personal brand. That takes time and dedication and a strategy and simply automating it or looking for shortcuts around it will not cut it. And I'll be honest, I have a lot of people that reach out to me and say, I want you to find me a job. And that's not acting like the CEO of your career. It really goes against the core values of everything that I preach about. Because when you try to outsource your job search to somebody else, that's essentially trying to outsource your career to somebody else where you're literally taking the exact opposite approach of acting like the CEO of your career. You're putting all of your trust and all of your power into the hands of somebody else and expecting them to do the hard work for you. And there's no better way to end up with career dissatisfaction than being completely hands-off like that. So stop always looking for shortcuts and only use shortcuts that will truly help you shave off time, but not necessarily shave off the effort. The next thing that I would suggest is stop listening to people who have never achieved what you want to achieve. When you're trying to accomplish or achieve something, it seems like everybody suddenly has an opinion. When they offer their opinion, even though it may be made with your best intention at heart, it doesn't mean that you should take the advice seriously. And this even goes for some gurus out there. I've seen some very well-known and very high profile career coaches giving advice that is horrifically bad and will cause you to lose job opportunities. They're literally hurting their audience. What I would suggest that you do is when you're considering the advice from somebody, whether it's career coaching, whether it's your own personal career vertical, whether it's mentorship or whatever the case might be, I would only recommend that you try to find somebody who has already walked the path that you're trying to go in. In other words, has done the job that you're looking to do, or in the case of career coaching, I don't understand why you would take a career advice or hiring advice from somebody who has never been involved with hiring on any level in their career before. And unfortunately, this well-known career coaching company is giving out very damaging advice. And when you look behind the scenes, the people who are actually delivering the advice sure enough, have never been involved in recruiting before. So my recommendation would be to stop listening to people who have never walked the path that you're trying to walk. And finally, one of the most important components, if you truly wanna get ahead of the 99%, is to be consistent. So you know all the things that you should be doing. You know that you, you should be customizing the resume. You know you should be preparing adequately for your interviews with a degree of strength. You know you should be building out the right kinds of networks and you know you should be improving your personal skills to make yourself the most marketable that you can but you have to do that consistently. And the people who are doing that consistently are going to be setting themselves apart from the crowd because listen, I see it on the other end. I see it on the hiring side. 
I see the people who are considered to be the superstar candidates and they do all the things that I've just talked about in this video and they're doing it consistently. If you only do it for a few weeks, you decide to give up on it because it's too hard. You want to revert back to your old habits because that's what feels most comfortable for you. Results will lack and you'll slip back into the 99% and you'll just be an average candidate. And if you're one of 600, 700, 800 candidates, you really wanna be that top 1% because those are the people who are getting the job offer. And if you're ready to join the one percenters, I do offer some training courses that will help. The first one is called Resume Rocket Fuel, which is designed to teach you how to write that resume and how to customize it and use it as a strategic document so that you can get yourself into the interview process. It's designed to really get your foot in there. Once you get your foot in the door though, it's up to you to sell yourself throughout the rest of the interview process. And that's where the ultimate job seeker bootcamp comes in. It's an A to Z guide. It's one of the most robust courses that I offer. And it takes you through each step from searching for jobs and the best way to do that all the way through till you get to the offer. And we break down all the steps in between. And with the offer, we'll make sure that we teach you how to not leave a single dime on the table. And that alone is worth the price of admission for that one. If you wanna skip those long lines and get those recruiters to come and find you, which is absolutely preferable, then I would encourage you to take a look at the course unlocking LinkedIn because it's going to teach you how to actually network with strength and know what exactly is it you're doing and set it up so that recruiters can come and find you and flip the script a little bit. With a little bit of elbow grease, consistency, and taking ownership in your career, you can become the one percenter. If you're continually getting rejected, it's something to start taking a very long look in the mirror and asking yourself, are you truly doing everything that you need to to be considered the one percent? As always, appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.